Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. Today we're going to be painting up the Hernkin Pioneers from the League of Otan starter box set. Now, I assemble them up to the point where they get in the way of painting. The bikes are almost entirely built, the riders are separate, the handlebars are separate, a lot of the little uh, doodads that go on top of the bikes are separate, um, their heads are separate for ease of painting, and then uh, some of the wheel or copper hubcaps are separate. And these are all the paints I used for this model kit. Alright, then we're going to use Liquitex modeling putty and we're going to start with the basis. Since this takes a long time to do, might as well do this step out of the way. Well, it takes a long time to dry. So basically what happened was I applied a bunch of putty onto the bases. However, the putty was so thick that when I moved to apply like texture on it by using a dry brush just to tap, 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 the stuff was so thick that it just moved the stuff out of the way instead of creating uh, little dots and stuff on it. So I moved on to a paper towel to try to apply texture and that kind of worked. And then I used uh, the back of a dry brush piece to create the craters because I still am doing that moon look because I just like it kind of works and uh, after that I then applied like where the model would adhere to the base on it and then I also applied these 3d printed little rocks I have the last ones from Alright, with Eschen Grey, Grey Sear and White Scar White, we're going to do the pre-coating. So I'm going to paint everything with Eschen Grey. Then I'm going to highlight from above with Grey Sear through an airbrush. And then once that's done, we're going to use White Scar White and a dry brush. Now, I kind of messed up. I used too large of a dry brush for this. I should have used the smaller size because a lot of the details are very tiny and fine. But essentially, the bikes really couldn't catch on to anything because they're very round, no sharp edges. So this mostly was for like pieces of leather, the stuff that the bikes are carrying a lot of random little pieces in there but not the main parts of the bike I tried on some parts but or like the edges or whatever you can call the edges but it wasn't the closest it didn't work too well so there was very little to actually dry brush that worked Alright, with the Sons of Horus green and Lamian medium mixed, we're going to paint the armor chassis, yeah, the chassis of the bikes. So, like, my ratio is like two uh, paintbrushes worth of the paint and three drops from a dropper of Lamian medium. However, my paintbrush is a unique size and my dropper may be a unique size, so this ratio is pretty much worthless to you guys unless you have the exact stuff I do. But this is essentially what I use to get a right consistency without water. And then I just apply it all over the chassis. Alright then, with French Ultramarine and Viridian Hue, we're going to make an oil wash or paint for these models. So I went with very thick, so I applied Viridian Hue and then mixed in some French Ultramarine and I was trying to go for a turquoise color, bluish, greenish, and it wasn't a full wash, it was kind of a light paint and I applied it all over. With this very thick version, I could just wipe it up and there'd be like something very deep in the recesses, so there'd be some sh good shadowing. That didn't really work. And so I did my usual apply, wipe, and then I did 
dilute it, I added uh, more mineral spirits to the mix to make it into a wash, and I applied it all over to do another sort of transition, and then wipe again to create some better transition from light to dark. But I could have just done this in one go with it just a wash, in a somewhat thick wash, and then just apply it and wipe once. So a bit of a wasted time here, and the effect would have essentially been the same. Alright then, with Hobgrothide and Lamian Medium, I'm going to make a wash of this with two brushes worth of Hobgrothide and two and three drops of Lamian Medium with my specific tools. I mean, this is just the ratio I use. I mean, unless you guys have the same stuff, you can't replicate it. And then I just apply this onto their coats, uh, the writer's coats. And with Ulthuang Grey, I applied this to the inside of their coats. Note I used Air Ulthuang Grey because the real regular stuff is terrible, the quality. And so I applied this to the inside of their coats. There's one guy who is a back gunner, uh, so he has a lot more coat than the others. Alright, I wanted to try something. and. You be the judge of whether it was good or not. So burnt sienna, I made a wash out of this. First one was a bit thick, and then I applied it all over their coats, including the white part of the coat as well, to add some sh depth and shadow. Then I wiped with a makeup sponge. Then I made another wash out of the remainder, but I diluted it further so it was even thinner. And then I lightly applied this all over their coats and stuff, and the white part of their coat as well. And then did another wipe on the most raised areas. Eh. It's hard to say. The color could have been better, and I probably should have gone with a dark brown, but that's what I think. And now with gray sear and lamin medium, I create basically the same kind of wash I always do, and then I applied it onto the writer's uh, pants, and it didn't work out too well. Alright, so I went a little simple and old school. So with Nolan Oil, Lamian Medium, and Grey Sear, we're going to paint the pants and stuff again. So with Nolan Oil, mix with some Lamian Medium to uh, make the shade paint work better. Uh, essentially just a little bit of uh, Lamian Medium makes it uh, flow better onto the model and stops like that weird marbling. I applied this all over the white pants, which also includes the uh, white bed sheets they have. I don't know, bed packs or whatever. And then I then highlighted everything with gray sear again. I just a little bit watered down, painted like the most prominent raised areas of the pants and the uh, rolled up beds. 
and then I applied another layer, a more thinned down layer of Nuln Oil and Lamine Medium onto it to create a final level of uh, depth. Now with Corvus Black, Eschen Gray, and I didn't use Dawnstone in the end. Uh, so with Corvus Black, I paint the wheels, uh, whatever these things are, and uh, their boots as well. Then with Eschen Gray, I painted the backpack, or the stuff they carry in the back. Then with Lamp Black, I created another wash using Mineral Spirits and I just applied onto the boots, the hub cap wheel thingies, and the backpacks on the back. And uh, that's about it. Now, since the bases are completely dry, I try to do a dry fitting of some pieces just so I can get where the wheel and the stone that they're attached to on the model is. And so I try to find a good spot on the base to put it, and then I just, with a micro pen, uh, paint an outline of the rock so I can get an idea of where it's going to go. And then I glue the rocks on properly and the stones that the models are adhered to. Alright, with Liquitex Modeling Putty and... Yeah, the bases. So essentially, the bases are too smooth, the texture wasn't good. It's because I made the putty on it so thick, it didn't work too well. So what I did was I took, went back, took the putty, applied it all over, and... Yeah, it, uh, so it kind of dried a bit before I got to texture it, and so it was resistant to the texture, and so it looked... It ended up looking like mud being swished around everywhere, instead of like the usual texture I was getting from my previous two projects with moon bases. Alright, with Doom Bull Brown, Mornfang Brown, Agrax or Shade XV88, we're going to do a lot of the leather. So first we're going to take Doom Bull Brown, water down a bit, and we're going to apply this to the handles of the axes, pick, picks, and just other things, handlebars and stuff, with the finest camera angles, make sure you get a good look at it. Then with Mornfang Brown, water down a bit, we apply this on all the leather straps, the belts, and such and such, and yeah. Then we apply Agrax Earthshade all over. Then we go back with Mornfang Brown and we re-highlight all the leather pieces. For the belts, we basically just paint the top two-thirds of it. And... Yeah. And then with XV88 mixed with Mornfang Brown, we then paint the edges of all the belts and the leather gun holster thingies. And that's it. Alright, with Cadian Flesh Tone, Gulliman Flesh, and Lamin Medium, we're going to be painting their faces. They have very little skin, so we're just going to start with a base layer of Cadian Flesh Tone all over what skin they have. Then with Gulliman Flesh uh, diluted with Lamin Medium, we're going to apply this all over. It's lightly diluted because I do want some strong color because they're, the features are so tiny and small, only strong contrasts are really going to show up from a distance. By a distance, I mean like 12 inches away. 
And then once you do that, we re-highlight with KDF Flesh Tone. And you can repeat the process many times as you like to get it right, because however diluted your Gulliman Flesh is uh, will affect that. So for very tiny details, strong contrasts tend to work better. Alright, with Eshin Grey and Grace here, we're going to paint the beards on the few dwarves that have them. So with Eshin Grey, we're going to start as the base layer on their mustaches and beards, the ones who have it. And then with Grace here, we're just going to paint straight fine lines as best we can onto the hairs. It may not look too good in this very, very zoomed in camera, but like at a distance, it's going to be fine. Now with Aberland Sunset and Uriel Yellow, we're going to paint the headlights and little tiny lights that he has on his wheels. So basically we take the darker color, Aberland Sunset, apply it all over. Then with Uriel Yellow, we apply a dot in the center of each light. Alright, with Dawnstone, XP88, Thunderhawk Blue, and Grace here, we're going to paint the bases. They're, yeah, they're as done as they're going to be. So first, I layer the whole thing in Dawnstone. Then I take XV88 and apply water. Or the better way to think of it is I got water in I got some XV88 in my water. I super thinned it down and then applied it onto the stones in the surrounding area of the stones, making it random just for uniqueness. And then following the previous one, I got some Thunderhawk Blue in my bowl of water, making it super thin, and then I applied it all over the bases to add a bluish hue. And then once that dried, usually with the help of a hair dryer, I then took gray sear and I dry brushed the entire bases. And they're done. Alright, with Abaddon Black, Vallejo Acrylic Metal Color Exhaust Manifold, and I completely forgot to apply the other two colors here, Dura Aluminum and Copper Color. Essentially what I do is, well, I'm doing all the metals, so the exhaust, so because a lot of the metals, uh, the pieces are very tiny, uh, it's hard to see any highlights or anything on that. So high contrast between two colors is the best way to pick them out at a distance. By distance I mean like 12 inches. So we're going to mix Abaddon Black with the Exhaust Manifold to make it even darker. I'm sure Vallejo makes a more darker metal, but these things are, are expensive. It's like 35 bucks for two or for, you know, for four of these paints. So there probably is a black metal out there. I just don't have it yet. So I'm making my own by mixing Abaddon Black into it. <coughs> and so I paint all the metal. The back of their hands have metal plates. The metal for, on all the boats and ships. The metals on their guns the metal on the bottom of their wheels, uh, how do you understand that? Uh, basically everything, the metals is all this. Then what I do is I go back and, so I'm gonna do a light dry brush on the most raised areas, very lightly, because I just want a little spatter of it, of the bright silver from Dura Aluminum on it, so you can see the kind of a contrast there. And for the other parts, the parts that I can't dry brush, I just paint uh, just the tips of it to the most raised areas, the antennas, just the tips of those with the bright silver of Dura Aluminum. And then once that is done, I take the copper color and then I paint the coils that they have, each bike has, and then the anti-gravity wheels? I don't know what these are called. I don't, I don't even know if the codex would say what they are, but basically the wheels are now copper as well. I didn't show that because I forgot about it until later, but yes. Alright, with Corvus Black, Coila Green Shade, and Gulliman Flesh, we're going to add some color to the metal. So first with Corvus Black, we're going to paint the gun barrels on all their guns. Just a simple dot. Then with Coila Green Shade, a mix with some Lamy Medium to make it flow better. Just a little bit, not to really dilute it. We apply it onto the guns to make their guns have a bluish hue. And I do the same thing with Gulliman Flesh, but I forgot to record it. Uh, basically their guns have like these handles, uh, like these shotgun-like handles and stuff. So I was like, okay, I'll paint the handles that to make them like stand out at a distance. And that was it. And then I began to fully assemble the models. They're not done being painted yet, but some of the smaller details, I'd rather have it all assembled, that way I can easily paint it. However, after assembling a few pieces, I then realized something very key and important. 
I don't have any more super glue. I ran out <laughs> right as I started. And also, these things are really difficult to put together af after painted. For some reason, their cloaks and capes really have issue getting around the bike and the wheels of the bike, the back, right, and left wheel holder, whatever. And uh, while assembling it, I'll show some pictures, but I chipped the paint off on a lot of things here. It was really a struggle to get this thing on and glued onto the base. Uh, it's just ridiculous. So I ended up patching those back. I just went back with the same colors and just lightly colored it in. Alright, with Mornfang Brown, Corvus Black, Sons of Horus Green, Uriel Yellow, Evil Sun Scarlet, and Warp Stone Glow, we're going to paint some small details. So with Mornfang Brown, we're going to paint the, uh, like, they have these goggles, so I'm just going to paint it like a leather strap there. Then with Corvus Black, I'm going to paint the goggles themselves. Then with Sons of Horus Green, I'm going to apply it to the lenses of the goggles, for those who have it. And then once that's done with Uriel Yellow, I'm going to apply this onto the flat open screens that they have on their bikes and stuff. And then with Evil Sun Scarlet, I'm going to apply this randomly to some of the buttons around. And then with Warpstone Glow, some of the other buttons. These are just small little details just to add some flavor, but I'm not going to put much effort into them. As far as the goggles, the basic idea was that to have something that you could clearly see. Uh, so like black goggles with the green lenses would stick out more in their face, sort of. I decide to add a little more sharpness to their coat, so I go back with Hobgrog Hide, water down a bit, and then I just apply it to the edges of their coats, the most prominent sharp edges, just to add something to it. That's it. And now with AK Interactive Ultra Matte Varnish, I should have done this before I did the metals, but whatever. I apply this to all the non-metallic pieces. And yeah, so that uh, if it's grabbed, it'll have some protection from use and play, but oh well. And done. I just apply your basing color of choice, which I did was Corvus Black, and 7 out of 10. This was basically just a simple speed paint job, I wasn't going to put that much effort into it and stuff, so not much effort was needed. Uh, these are more like an ensemble piece, all the different pieces and colors are clear and distinct, and so they add together to create sort of an ensemble. But um, yeah. Yeah, I wasn't going to put that much of into them because they're like a squad, so they're not a character. But they have enough that they can kind of somewhat stand out. However, there are some things I will notice. Uh, getting these guys properly on a base and line was very difficult. Some of the guys aren't perfectly aligned, but it, it was ridiculous to get these guys right. Like, you'd have to fully assemble them and stuff like that. And it was just hard to get the alignment right, to glue everything together for a pre-made base to get these guys good. So that actually was the biggest challenge. The second biggest challenge was assembling them, because for some reason they would not properly fit into their stupid uh, chairs. The capes flapping on the side got in the way of the holder wheel things on the side. It was ridiculous. And then a bunch of small little details here and there, but it wasn't that big of a deal. And yeah, it took me forever to get to this because, sorry guys, but uh, IRL stuff really came in the way and I was super busy. Surprisingly busy. And I just couldn't get through to it all. Strange. And, uh, yeah. So overall, continuing on, I'm going to be pausing on the League of Otan box because I have other things to do. Or not other things to do. Like, um, another kit is going to come in the way that's a sort of a palette cleanser so and once I'm done with that I'm gonna go back to Votan because I want to finish it quickly and then move on to some other stuff and yeah so like the video if you like the video comment if you want to comment share if you want to share and more to come hopefully sooner